This one here looks very shit. I wasn't even expecting it to be this bad. Well, I, I think I know what to do with that guy. That's just... <laughs> Hi, I'm Marion and welcome to Marion's Test Kitchen. Today we're doing fried chicken. In this episode, I'm gonna test out nearly every different type of fried chicken, almost. I mean, you guys can hear that, right? Wow. That was a very messy dribble. <laughs> There's so many ways to do fried chicken. Like you can choose different cuts of chicken, brining, marinating, coating. What flavors do you choose? What sauce do you put with it? And I want to find out out of all of those things, like what is it that I really love about fried chicken? Because I obviously love it, but why? Like what are the elements that really make it good? I'm going to try out a whole bunch of different methods, ingredients and techniques to find the ultimate fried chicken. So first of all, I want to try out a whole bunch of different styles of fried chicken so I can really knuckle down and figure out what is it that I love. Uh, this is the Korean style fried chicken. The flavor, most of the flavor comes after the fact and that glaze kind of really soaks up the flavor. Now the other thing about this fried chicken is that it's the flat. So with the flat, you've got two bones running through uh, and then you've got the meat kind of surrounding the middle part here. That in itself is a question. like. Is it the flats that make this so good? I'm gonna go in next with the Thai fried chicken. I mean, you guys can hear that, right? It's like the crunch factor is amazing. With this style of fried chicken, to me, it's really about the background marinade. So I can taste like the garlic, the pepper, the coriander, but not so much flavor that it's overpowering the chicken, if you know what I mean. You know, for me, that's a, that's a really big, a big point. Because if you're making fried chicken, it's about the chicken and it's about the fried, and the fried is about making things crispy. I'm just kind of working this stuff out in my head. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go in now with the KFC. It's kind of not as good as I remember it. <laughs> I think the thing that's good about this chicken though is that you're adding spices and flavor, but you're not overpowering it, the flavor of the chicken itself. It's not my favorite though. So next I'm trying Nashville hot style chicken. And this one's supposed to be really spicy. Lots of spices going on. I'm getting kind of like salty. And then, <laughs> then the chili is hot. I mean, that's hot. The thigh itself, really nice and juicy, tender. That's what I'm really looking for. Like the chicken's gotta be juicy and tender. Otherwise, what are you doing? Making dry chicken, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Like I remember it. <laughs> I need it to be crunchy. Yeah. I need it to be moist. And I don't want too much um, of anything else going on, you know? Like, I, I, want, I, I want to taste the chicken. Really? I'm opposed to that because I love flavor, depth of flavor. So I'm loving this. This is so good. If you're going to have to pick one out of any cut, right, you're going to go to the thigh. I mean, what do you think, Hayley? Uh, I'm drums girl. You're drums. Yeah. I like that it's got actually got like a perfect amount of meat <laughs> on it. There's enough coating to go around it versus the amount of meat that there is as well. Yeah, I'm probably with Jamie on the thighs, I reckon. Mm. I think the thighs have a bit more juiciness to them. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean, there's no wrong. No, but, no. But there is wrong. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll you're tell you what's wrong. wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. So I reckon the best place to start is, what is the best cut of chicken for my fried chicken? I feel like this is really ground zero for me on the journey of fried chicken, if you like. So I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of these different pieces. Now what we've got here on this side is our white meat. Um, so that is your breast meat. And then what we've got over here is your darker meats. You've got your thighs, wings, drums. I wanna use milk and then the simplest kind of coating I can uh, because this is really gonna form the foundation of all my other tests. I really want the result here to be very clear without having the milk or the coatings interfere uh, with what I think about the chicken at this stage. So I'm just gonna grab some milk. I'm just gonna pop my pieces into here. This is my bone in piece. I think I'm gonna cut that into two through the bone. Same with the bone out actually. So just milk here. So for the coating, I'm just gonna simply go with some flour. I wanna season my flour. Salt, pepper, 
So the first thing I want to figure out here is, is it white meat or is it dark meat? So I'm going to go in here with my breast pieces and my thigh pieces. I want to test them out side by side. I want to get enough coating on here so that we get that kind of crispy breaded fried chicken thing going on. So I've got some hot oil. I'm going to put my chicken pieces in, cook them for about 10 minutes or until they're really lovely and golden and cooked through. I'm going to drain them and then we can test them out. All right, so here we are, moment of truth, because we're going to get in here. I'm going to go with my breast first. Uh, this is a bone-in piece, and I think it looks good. Um, let's see what it tastes like. So I actually think this is pretty good for a piece of breast. Like having the bone there has actually helped with keeping the meat juicy. You know, overall, I'm not, it's not as bad as I thought. This is our bone-out piece. This to me is, it's drier. This is another piece of the bone-in breast, so that that bigger chunk piece. And see so again, I think because of pure bulk here, that's actually retained a lot more of the juiciness, like chicken juiciness, even though it's, it's a breast. So that's pretty good. One last piece of white meat. This is a tenderloin and breast meat part. So my tenderloin's down here. I might just see if they taste different, a different texture. Tenderloin's pretty good. It's probably got less flavor, I think but the texture is not too bad. Obviously this breast meat is a lot leaner, which is why I'm talking about it being dry. Well, a lot of people do say they like the breast because it's healthier, but I don't know if you really want healthy fried chicken. I don't. <laughs> so now I'm excited because I'm expecting big things from my thighs. This is the bone out piece actually that I'm starting with. To me already, there's a lot more flavor. This has much more just natural, more depth of flavor than the white meat for sure. So this is bone in. I gotta say, you can really, you can really notice a difference here. It's juicy, it's crispy, it's tasty. It's got, it ticks all the boxes in my book. Hmm. Yeah. So looking at the white versus dark, I think the white has less flavor. I like chicken flavor. So definitely the bone in chicken thigh piece is my winner. So I've decided it's definitely the dark meat over the white meat, but I do want to test out the rest of my dark meat to see if anything comes close. I'm going to start here with this guy. I, you know, like, I just think it's a bit awkward. It's so big and bulky. Anyway, let's get in here and have a look. It's juicy. It's yummy. For me, it's a bit awkward. It's about the experience of the eating. It's, it's, it's okay. It's good. So if we take the drum and flat separately, because we fried those separately, bone in, flat. That was a very messy dribble. <laughs> It's juicy, I mean. <laughs> well, do I have like chicken juice running down my skin? <laughs> I, can't, I can't see it, but maybe you do. Hazards, the hazards of cooking and eating fried chicken. We've got the drum. I reckon the meat on the drum is slightly chewier than the flat. Now I'm gonna go in here with my drum stick. People often describe the drum as like a mini drum stick, but the meat on the drum stick is a lot more tender to me and a lot softer than the drum. For sure, this is my second favorite to the thigh. What I'm interested in though is we have the bone out drumstick. I don't think anyone's gonna go to the trouble of boning out that drumstick at home. I, I certainly wouldn't. Wow. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change my mind. Like if I was just like in an ideal world, right? This would, this would be my pick out of all these dark meat pieces. The problem is getting this to this, you'd spend 20 minutes on each drumstick. So if I'm thinking about all the chicken pieces I've tried, it's definitely the bone in chicken thigh that I love. And now that I've chosen my cut of chicken, I think the next best thing is to do the treatment of the chicken before we even get to the cooking part. I kind of want to figure out, is there something I can do to the chicken that's going to make it tastier, juicier, all those things. So I came up with wet brines and dry brines. I want to go with a wet brine first of all. I've decided to go with a buttermilk brine and I'm going to test that out over time period to see if time makes a difference to wet brining and to see if wet brining has an effect on flavor or juiciness. So what happens with a wet brine is the chicken sits in the liquid, the liquid is salty, the chicken itself absorbs some of the salt and the liquid. The salt helps the chicken to retain the liquid so you get a juicier uh, result. And I've got an egg here and I want some extra salt here because of course we need the salt in order to get that brining action happening. 
So I want my chicken pieces in here. What I want to know, and I, and I don't know this, is there a big difference between like 30 minutes, two hours, or 24 hours? So I'm going to cover my chicken with the brine and then pop these in the fridge. So I've got my standard coating mix. These guys have had the 24 hours, the two hours. This is my 30 minute one. And I'm gonna cook these until they're beautifully crispy and then we're gonna taste them. Yeah, I feel like there's a, a high chance of confusion here. <laughs> so let me just get these labeled up so I don't mix them up. So I want to get in here and have a look at what's happened inside my chicken. Okay, so this is my 30 minute brine. That definitely has a lot more of like a juicy factor than the just completely no brine that we started out with. Now, this is my two hour piece. That's really a lot juicier. I mean, I wasn't getting that kind of juice action with that 30 minute one. It's just juicy, a fact. The juice factor is there, but the depth of flavor and the saltiness, way, way more than just your 30 minutes. I can't believe the difference in just like the hour and a half. 24 hours. This one doesn't seem as juicy as the two hour. If I press on that, I don't see a huge difference though. But anyway, let's try. I'm getting more juice factor from the two hours you know, if I'm weighing up time factor here, 24 hours does not make a huge difference. It's that two hour one. That's my guy, wow. But I also wanna know like, can I add anything extra here by changing up the brine? You know, doing a spicy version of the buttermilk I think would be a good idea. I also wanna try out more of an Asian style, so like a master stock brine. And then we're also gonna do a pickle brine, which I'm very interested in, because I've never done that before. So just riffing on that buttermilk style marinade, I wanna add some spice because you know me and I love spicy things. <laughs> I'm gonna add in the buttermilk, start with the standard buttermilk brine, egg, salt, pepper. I'm gonna go with the sambal. Smoked paprika, some cayenne. Let's go in with our chicken now. Okay, I'm gonna get that in the fridge. Okay, so here I wanna do my master stock brine. And master stock is a braising liquid essentially, traditionally used to cook meats. It's very soy heavy, which is why I wanted to try it out here because it kind of gives me that same salty solution um, situation that I'm after with a brine. So this has been cooked and just until that sugar's dissolved and then I cooled it down. Now I can put my chicken in. So this just needs to go into the fridge for the two hours. All right, pickles next. So the idea here is that I thought, what is like the saltiest thing that I can think of that's already done? And that would be pickles, but I can't open the jar. <laughs> so I think what's gonna happen here is we're gonna get that really salty flavor going through the chicken. I do hope that I can taste some of that pickle, you know, character and flavor in the chicken, because I think that would be really nice. But I am yet to know. Does that look a bit weird? <laughs> Ah. Now into the fridge. So my three brine contenders have had their two hours, which we know is the optimal time. Um, I've got my spicy here, the master stock and the pickle version. And this is just my standard mix that I've been using all along for the crummy. So let's go in here with our spicy one, first of all. So each of these pieces is gonna get coated and then fried just like we've been doing with all the other tests. So what I'm really trying to find out here is does adding the extra flavor into the brine affect the flavor of the chicken? Because I mean, like, if you don't have to add all the things, then why add all the things? So we're kind of getting to this stage now where like the chicken looks really delicious. Like I'm really getting really excited about trying it. We're gonna go with the spicy buttermilk first. What I'm really trying to get here though is how much of the extra flavor that I added has actually sort of seeped into that chicken. Like again, this is why we went with that two hour brine because that juiciness is there again. It smells good. I can't smell much, much more of the spice than I could before. As in, I'm not getting a huge amount of fragrance there. I'm getting some flavor but not as much as I thought. Like the thing I can taste the most is the smoked paprika. 
It's not necessarily giving me like big spicy though. Interesting, because I wonder whether if I want like a really spicy hit, whether that's gonna have to come from the coating or the dipping sauce or something that I do after. Okay, let's try the master stock brine next. So I was unsure about how this one would turn out. Given that there wasn't much happening with the first one, I don't know, let's see. Oh wow, way more flavor in this one. As in like the flavor of what I've added into the stock or the brine, it's really penetrated here. I can taste the soy sauce. I can taste the ginger and the sort of savoriness from the spring onion. I wonder whether because the actual brine itself is not as thick. So I wonder whether the flavor molecules, I don't know whether it or the, the liquid was able to be absorbed a little easier, but I don't necessarily know that this is the flavor that I want for my fried chicken. Like it, it tastes very soy sauce and gingery. We'll think about that for a minute. Um, I'm gonna go in with the pickle juice. Uh, let's see. I'm getting the pickle flavor almost immediately. It's not too salty though. But again, like I'm, I'm getting the pickle flavor, but I don't know if I want my fried chicken to taste like pickles. I think this is really coming down to what is the flavor that I want because we have actually managed to inject a fair bit of flavor here. Like the pickle one tastes like pickles, which for some people might be good. So probably where I wanna go now though is compare the wet brine with a dry brine. So I'm still trying to figure out the best way to prepare the chicken before we cook it. I just wanna go in now with a dry brine, just a simple salt dry brine, and then we're gonna get into a little bit more of like a marinade kind of situation. But first of all, let's go with our chicken and then salt and pepper. So with a dry brine, you've got the salt drawing the moisture out of the chicken, and then that's gonna sit on the surface and then eventually get absorbed back in. So now I wanna figure out the timings for the dry brine. Is it better 30 minutes, two hours, or overnight, say 24 hours? So these pieces are gonna go into the fridge for their respective times, and then we're gonna cook them. All right, so again, we're gonna go in here with a very standard coating, the same flour, salt, pepper mix we've been doing, and I've got my 30 minute guy here. So given that our wet brine testing resulted in the two hour time being the optimal, I'm hoping actually <laughs> that the two hour version of this is gonna be just as good because again, you know, waiting 24 hours for fried chicken is kind of a bummer. <laughs> All right, so surprisingly, after all the fried chicken I've eaten, I'm still really excited to eat this chicken. Uh, it's just something about fried chicken. Look at it, it's just delicious. So this is a 30 minute one. Obviously, same as the wet brine situation, I wanna know, is the chicken juicy? Is it beautifully seasoned? This 30 minute one looks pretty juicy actually. I mean, look at that. The dry brine seems to have a slightly thinner coating because when you've got liquid and you add liquid to the breading mixture, you get more clumps. So this is a lot thinner. Oh wow, that was one juicy piece of chicken. Hmm, interesting. This one is our two hour brine. Oh wow, yeah, that's like, that's really juicy. <laughs> The depth of flavor, the saltiness on that, just slightly edges the 30 minutes, but not by much. I do think the two hour one slightly has a bit more depth of, you know, kind of salty flavor than the 30 minutes, but it's not a huge amount. So I really don't know what to expect from this 24 hours. Is it gonna be overly salty? I'm not really sure. I mean, juice factor there, that's probably like the best juice factor. Beautifully salty, crispy, crunchy, but I don't think any more amazing than the two hour, maybe slightly saltier, but definitely not worth the wait at 24 hours. I actually think with a dry brine, just the salt and pepper, you could get away with 30 minutes, but for the extra hour and a half, I think it's worth it for the slight depth of flavor that you get with the two hour. 24 hours is definitely not worth it. I think what I'll do now that I am pretty happy with the dry brine situation, I wanna bring in some extra flavor. So can we do, marinades that are sort of, you know, not liquid like our wet brine, but can potentially add in some flavor. So we'll see. So I've got three marinades that I wanna try out, a ginger wasabi, a spicy and tangy, a Thai style marinade as well. The ginger wasabi has mainly garlic, wasabi, ginger, shallots, soy sauce, and rice wine. So for my spicy tangy, I've got smoked paprika, white pepper, sambal olive, sugar, salt, and I'm gonna use the zest from that lime as well. 
Now for my Thai marinade, I'm going with a very classic coriander, garlic and pepper, some oyster sauce, some soy sauce, turmeric for some colour, some sugar and some salt. And then because we figured out that the two hour dry brine was kind of our magic number, I'm just going to go ahead and do these for two hours. So these guys have had their two hours and I am ready now to coat them in our stand, well now it's our standard coating mix. So I'm going to coat each of these pieces, fry them up and then see how we go. So even just looking at these before I've tasted them, the coating seems a lot thicker. It's kind of more craggly, which I do like the look of. I think it looks very enticing. I'm gonna go and have a look here at the ginger wasabi. I feel like this coating is slipperier. You know, the, the wrist, like, oh, see how that's kind of falling off? Maybe the moisture plus the roughage has made that coating come off a little bit. So you've got the crunch from the coating that did stay on. The bottom coating kind of came off. I am getting some soy and ginger flavors. Overall, I'm a little underwhelmed though, and I'm not getting any wasabi at all. So going to the trouble of using fresh wasabi was a big waste. I, I'm already gonna call that one. That's, that's my least favorite. In fact, my least favorite of the day, actually. So there you go. All right, spicy tangy. Let's see if this one does any better. I think the outside here is a bit more sturdy than the first one. There's so much lime flavor coming through there. It's very salty. Wow. Both the sour and the salt are giving me that kind of like, you know when you eat like a really sour lolly and all the juices in your mouth start going? Well, it's kind of like in a really harsh way. So I feel like just getting this kind of like kind of feeling that is not really altogether that pleasant really. Anyway, let's try our Thai style. The coating on this one is pretty sturdy. I love the flavor. It's not as overpowering as the other two and it's definitely kind of boosting the chicken flavor without overtaking it. But this one, along with the other two in this set, definitely less on the like glass shattering crispy crust. The dry brine was so crispy and that really thin kind of crispy. So it's kind of a choice on texture here because I like the flavor, but do I want to sacrifice that really crisp, satisfying crunch of just the salt? This is a very perplexing question. <laughs> So after all the fried chicken that we tried and made today, I'm starting to get a clearer picture, I think, of what I'm aiming for. So I feel like the important things for me are crunch, number one. Number two, juiciness. And then flavor. What's the direction of the flavor? So many different options there. That's it for day one. I feel like I ate so much chicken. I have more chicken to eat tomorrow because I need to do coatings. I need to do cooking styles. I need to do sauces, so many things left to do before I can figure out what is going to be my ultimate fried chicken. Plus like how much more fried chicken can I eat? A lot. I'm on day two of my fried chicken journey and now what I want to do is take that testing I did yesterday, so the chicken thigh, cutlet, the dry brining, and I want to figure out now what am I going to coat the chicken in? Uh, how am I going to cook it? So the cooking style. And then also, do I need a sauce? Does the ultimate fried chicken need a sauce? That's what we're going to do today. So to start off with, I think what I want to do is really strip back everything and just start from ground zero. So what does plain chicken and plain flour, what's the texture like? What does it taste like? I want to try the most basic recipe first, start there and then build to see where I'm going to go on that coating journey. Yeah, like I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty impressed with that crunch. It looks really crunchy. The color's nice. I think the interesting thing here will be to see does the salt affect the crunch, but also does the salt affect the texture of the meat inside? Because the salt's supposed to change um, and tenderize the meat. So two things, I guess, but yeah, crunch wise, it sounds pretty good. I reckon definitely less juicy. I feel like that meat looks a lot drier than it has with some of the other salty kind of bits and pieces. Mm. It's definitely crunchy. It's definitely, definitely less juicy. I think we can safely say perhaps this isn't the best version. And I think we can safely say we definitely need salt. So given that I've just sorted out that we really do need salt here, I'm gonna test out the rest of these coatings with a salt brine chicken. Um, so I've got these that have had the two hour salt brine, which is what we liked from the previous testing. So the purpose of trying out all these coatings is one very simple thing. What's gonna give me the best crunch? That's what I'm after. So lots of options here. I've got 
Corn flour, also known as corn starch. Corn flour is often used for coating fried things um, in Asian cooking. Like my mum would use corn flour before she fried um, her fried chicken. The other one that's often used in Asian cooking is rice flour. And I think the interesting thing about rice flour and corn flour is that they don't have any gluten. So I'm interested to see what the lack of gluten does for that crunch factor. The rice flour is giving us a really thin coating. I mean, we're not getting much texture there at all. Uh, whereas with the corn flour, you can see you're getting quite a bit of that craggly kind of coating, which I quite like. Now, the other sort of Asian style of coating I wanted to check out was tempura flour. So tempura flour, or tempura batter mix is a mix. And usually it contains baking powder, which I think might be a good addition for some added crunch and also some added color. So I'm pretty hopeful about this one. Okay, so corn flour, rice flour, tempura. Now let's head into the more like familiar kind of plain flour territory. So this is our flour, pepper, salt, I'm gonna call it our standard coating mix. That's what we've been using for all of our tests so far. So I just wanna see how that standard salt, pepper, flour goes against all these other different variations. But just one more variation on this standard coating, I wanna try adding baking powder. I'm just gonna put a half teaspoon of baking powder in there. Okay, so with these next two, I wanted to test out double dredging and triple dredging, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm just doing a milk, just regular milk and our regular standard flour, pepper, salt mix. That is a double dredge and now a triple. But of course, I think you can have too much of a good thing. So I've never done a triple before. I'm, I wanna see, is it gonna be too like, too much, too thick? So rather than crunch, you're kind of getting stodgy, hard bits. So I have all my different coatings here that I want to try out. I'm going to cook them in the hot oil and then we're going to taste and compare. So here we are, we have all our different coatings on the chicken. I gotta say, this is really interesting. The color difference is interesting. The textures are really interesting. We're going to start off with the standard so I'm getting very thin, salty crust, which is great. Juicy chicken, I like it. Let's go in now with the standard plus the baking powder. The reason for adding baking powder is always to increase crunch and also to develop a better color. I really can't see much of a difference here between the standard and the standard with baking powder in terms of color. But let's see how we go in terms of crunch. Oh, a big lot of juice that came out. <laughs> that nearly went on your camera, Dax. I'm not discerning that much of a difference in terms of crunch factor here. If anything, maybe this one, the crunch or the skin is a little firmer. I don't really think the baking powder has added much here actually. Okay, let's get into this territory here where we've got lighter looking chicken. This is an issue for me already because the first thing you do when you go to eat fried chicken is you look at it, obviously. The corn flour, our corn flour guy isn't too bad, but let's have a look. Okay, crunch factor sounds pretty good here. The crunch on all three of these, pretty similar. Maybe the corn flour coating, if I'm just touching it, doesn't seem as sturdy and robust. Like I reckon if I let this corn flour one sit for a while, it could get a little soggy. Whereas these ones are still really nice and crunchy. All right, rice flour. Already I'm not sold on my rice flour. I think the color is an issue here. Oh, it sounds crunchy though. This one is really interesting because it's crunchy, but it's chewy. It's weird. Whereas these other three sort of crunch and disappear. Rice flour, you know, like mochi, that kind of mochi stickiness. It's almost like that. A little bit of that with the crunch. Do I like it? Mm, I think the color is more important to me. Let's keep going and we'll try the tempura. So the tempura is an interesting one because I've used it simply as a flour coating and obviously it's meant to be made as a batter, but just as a flour, I just wanted to test it out. I like it a lot. It's crunchy, has a little bit of that chewiness. It's good, it's, a st it's sturdy too. It's not quite as like crispy, crisp, crispy as the standard flour, but it is a good kind of crunch. So we've kind of run through now just flour coatings, essentially. Um, these are all very thin coatings. Do I have enough like 
coating versus meat ratio here. I'm definitely getting crunched with these, but is it enough? So I wanna have a look now at the double and the triple dredge. So the difference here is that we've got added liquid. And I gotta say, it looks very appealing. It's very crunchy. It takes longer to get through. Like it's a lot thicker. This is very much a textural thing. I've definitely got crunch, but do I want that extra, I don't know what it is, like that extra volume to the crunch or the thickness, I guess. Let me try the triple. I can't, uh, to be honest, I don't think there's a huge amount of difference between the double and the triple. I think the coating is actually a little heavier, so it, I think it is starting to come a bit loose from the chicken, more so than the double. And I don't think that extra heaviness actually adds anything. It's, an, it's, a, it's definitely a conundrum. I don't know which one to choose. Okay, but you try and then tell me what you think. Okay. Mm. Mm. For me, it was ultra crunchy without being like too heavy on the batter. It was like the perfect amount of the coating mm. and the chicken. Uh, so here's the tempura one. The, the actual uh, coating itself is the crispiest by far. So if I was to say to you, tempura and double dredge, what would your answer be? I think the double dredge. The double dredge. If I made fried chicken and I did it with this, yeah. and you made fried chicken with that, and everyone then, would grab that first, I wouldn't mean, they? I mean, who eats chicken blindfolded? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <Yeah. laughs> So I'm gonna get into flavor territory now. We did some flavor early on when we looked at flavor in the chicken, but now I wanna think about flavor on the outside, like that moment when you're just biting into that coating, can we get some extra flavor like right there? I'm still contemplating the type of coating. Is it a double dredge, is it not? Um, but I think for this purpose, I'm gonna go with a liquid and a single drench and then just really concentrate on the flavors and see how we go. Um, so I've got my chicken in buttermilk because of course that's giving me the liquid that I need to create that craggly coating. But for the coating itself, I wanna try recreating that kind of KFC experience. I think for a lot of people, myself included, like I have a bit of nostalgia for that KFC spicing. So I've got a kind of approximation, if you like, of some KFC spicing. I've got some flour here. Um, I'm gonna do some smoked paprika, some mustard powder, ground ginger, celery salt, oregano, dried basil, dried thyme, and some onion salt, some black pepper. Ooh, that looks kind of fun. I like how that looks already. So that's my KFC-esque kind of coating. Now I'm gonna do just like a spicy coating with the spice in the coating. Um, so I've got flour, pepper, salt, ground coriander, some garlic powder, and some spicy. This is like an Asian chili powder, which you know, you kind of get flakes and seeds, and I like the fact that it's kind of chunky. I'm gonna put in some cayenne as well. And I'm also gonna add in some Korean red pepper flakes, or gochugaru. I really did like that spice factor on the Nashville hot style chicken that we tried yesterday. With the Nashville hot style, I was getting the heat because we were applying it right before I ate it with that chili glaze. So I was thinking maybe we need a mix of spicy chili things that I can sprinkle on top of the chicken. So it's not in the chicken coating, it's on the top of it. So I'm gonna make my sprinkle here with the Korean red pepper flakes, the Asian dried chili powder, some salt. I'm gonna go in with the garlic powder too. Ah. Oh. That looks spicy. So what I need to do now is cook my buttermilk soaked chicken with one dredge in my KFC coating and then in my spicy coating and then just in the flour, salt, pepper, but sprinkles with the spicy sprinkle. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere with some good looking chicken. I love that you can see the flavor because it's just asking to be eaten. Every one of those pieces I think looks really attractive. So that's very exciting. The KFC one first has a lovely color. And I think some of those spices, maybe particularly the smoked paprika has given us that really lovely deep dark color. If I have a look in here, lovely coating. I love how that coating is sticking. I this is already to me better than the double dredge. Smells good. I can mainly smell smoked paprika. I like the crunch. I could smell smoked paprika, but actually when I'm tasting it, the 
predominant flavor I'm getting are those celery salt and onion salt. So what I'm getting at the end here is that dried vegetal flavor, which I think, and the herbs. So that to me is giving me that KFC experience. It's homemade, so I feel like it, I think it, I think it tastes better. This one is my spicy version. I love how you can see all the little flecks of chili in the crust. Ooh, nice coating, crunchy. Mmm. I'm just waiting for the heat because I'm not getting heat straight up. What I've found both with the wet brine when we tried to add in the chili spice then, and also in this situation where we've put the chili spice into the coating, I'm not getting very much chili. It's a nice flavor, but if I was after a spicy chicken, this is not doing it because it's not spicy. So I'm hoping that my next version with the chili sprinkled on after the cooking might give me some of that. All right, so I can see all that chili on the outside. Is this gonna give me the spice that I'm looking for? Straight away, having the flavoring and the spicy on the outside means that it's at the forefront. So I'm getting it hitting my tongue and my mouth a lot quicker. And now I'm getting that really lovely heat coming through, which I was not getting from the spice in the coating. And also I didn't get from the spice in the brine inside the chicken. But is my perfect fried chicken a spicy fried chicken? That's the question. So I thought we should do a bit of testing around the cooking method for fried chicken. So there's a deep fry, singular, there's double fry, triple fry, then there's also shallow frying, and then there is the non-frying frying, which is the oven bake. I'm really kind of like opposed to oven baking fried chicken, but we'll give it a shot, see what it looks like. So what we've got here is the buttermilk two hour brine, uh, which we've liked through the testing. And then this is our standard flour, salt, pepper mix that we've been using. So I'm gonna get all my pieces that I need into here. And then my coated piece of chicken is gonna go into the oven and baked until it's cooked through. Now I'm gonna shallow fry one of my pieces. So a small amount of oil in a skillet and cook until ready. For the double and triple fried, I'm gonna put both pieces in and then we're gonna fry those until they're golden, lightly golden. And then we're gonna take both pieces out, cool them down, and then go back in for a double, and then go back in for a triple. The reason I'm interested in the multi-fry is that doing a double or a triple fry is supposed to help you increase the crunch factor. Um, and I just wanna see if it's worthwhile, because it, it is more trouble to double and triple fry. Um, so I wanna see if I can get a crispier result. So first up, I mean, the inescapable, you have to look at what these look like. The double fry is what I would expect. It looks golden, looks delicious and crunchy. The triple fried is a lot darker, could be too dark. Um, you know, I'd like to taste it to see if we've got any bitterness there. I think the shallow fry looks really good. Like it's almost like shallow frying has sort of compacted some of that coating onto the chicken and it looks nice and crispy. That's not too bad. This one here looks very shit. I wasn't even expecting it to be this bad, um, but it's uneven. The bottom is soggy and gross. Like that's literally just, that's gross. It's gross. But if we have a look at the double fry first, let's go in here and have a look. I'm hearing crispy. I like that. What I'm looking for here is, is it crispier than a single fry? It's definitely crispier. I like the crispy. Is it crispier or more pleasant in its crispiness? than a double dredge. That's a real contender, I really like that. Okay, let's try the triple. Looks wise, I think this is too dark, but that's may maybe a personal preference. So it's still looking juicy. It's definitely not as juicy as the double. It's definitely crunchy, just slightly bitter. If you had other aromatics like spices, those things could burn on the triple because even just that flour coating, I can taste a little bit of burnt bitterness. So. Shallow fry, I have to say, is the dark horse. This coating seems to be a little looser though. I wonder if that's because I had to turn it so often in the pan. So maybe some of the coating kind of came loose. For me, is there a convenience factor here that the shallow frying fulfills? If it's as good as a deep fry, then great, because it's more convenient, but let's see. Definitely not as crunchy 
as the double fry. It's a little soggy, like you've got some parts of it that are a little soggy underneath the crunch. And I think that's because you might have bits sitting out of the oil or on the edge of the oil that are getting a bit soggy before they get crispy. That is an acceptable result, but is it the ultimate option? Not, not for me. So really what I've just done here is reconfirm to myself that deep frying is a wondrous thing. <laughs> the double fry actually makes it a lot crispier and crunchier without taking away from the juiciness of the chicken. Double fry is definitely worth it, even though you have to cook the chicken twice. Oven baking, well, I, I think I know what to do with that guy. That's just... <laughs> know your place. <laughs> All right, let's do sauces. <laughs> So I have a question about sauces and that is, does my ultimate fried chicken need a sauce? Should it stand on its own? Should it be a dipper? Should it be a glaze? I think there's a couple of questions to answer here. So I have my cooked chicken pieces here. These are plain buttermilk with our standard flour, pepper, salt coating. So I'm gonna go through a few different options here. The first one I wanna start off with is the Nashville hot style uh, chicken sauce. So I'm gonna go in with some spices first of all. So I've got my paprika, cayenne, chili powder, some brown sugar, garlic powder, and then the last thing here is I need some hot oil. So the deal with the Nashville hot style is that it should be super spicy and it's applied after the chicken is cooked. And that's actually gonna be the same deal with our Korean glaze. So it's like the coating soaks in the sauce. So I might just, I might cut a piece of this in half and we can do both of our glazed versions at once. So in my Korean glaze, I've got basically like a spicy, sweet and tangy mix going on. There's gochujang, there's soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, sugar. Okay, I do love the look of those. I love how that Nashville hot style sauce is really soaked into the coating. What's so interesting about this style of fried chicken is that you still get crunch and I love how really spicy it is. Like I think because you're applying that heat right at the very end, you're getting, you're getting that really fresh hit of like chili spice. I do like that. I think overall there's, there's a lot of flavor going on here though and it's very specific I think to this style. If I was gonna choose one style of fried chicken to eat forever, I don't know if that would be it. Let's go in with the Korean one and see how that one fares. So with this one, I really like the flavor. It's spicy, a little sweet and tangy. I've still got crunchy chicken. You know, again, it's the same question. Like, is this the chicken that I would wanna eat for the rest of my life? Let's go in with some dippers to figure some more of this out. Okay, so I'm gonna make like a spicy mayo. I'm just gonna go in with some mayonnaise and a hot sauce. So the reason I wanna try this option is that I think it's great to have like a spicy condiment so that you could choose to dip or not to dip. I thought I would like the spicy mayo a lot more, but when I really drill down and think about it, I do like the spiciness, but the mayo is kind of like fat on fat. Yeah, I think it's too much. If there can be too much of a good thing. Sweet chili sauce is next. Let's see how it goes with the fried chicken. I like it, but if I'm trying to concoct like the best fried chicken, I think the sauce needs to kind of almost be an afterthought. It needs to be something that's around if you want it, but the chicken itself really needs to be the star of the show. So. It's great to kind of have a selection of condiments or options, but I think in terms of devising the best fried chicken, I'm not sure it's really necessary. So I feel like now I'm at a point where I can articulate what I think is the best fried chicken. So I've narrowed it down. It's definitely about crunch. So first of all, it's that texture when you bite in. It's gotta be crispy, crunchy. Um, it has to be juicy. So the chicken itself has to be like the star of the show. And also I think the chicken has to stand on its own. So in terms of flavor, it needs to hold its own. It can have a sauce, but doesn't need to have a sauce. They're my, my kind of like, main takeouts. So in trying to come up with exactly my ultimate fried chicken recipe, it's quite a few things I think that have been surprising along the way. All of those things are gonna to come together. But if we start off at the cut of chicken, the bone in thigh for me definitely was the best out of all the cuts. I wanna use the dry brine because it really added the best salty flavor and helped the chicken stay nice and juicy. The two hour timing was perfect because I don't think it was worth it to wait the 24 hours. Now when it comes to actual sort of spicing and different aromatic flavors, there were a couple of things here. 
I think there were some aromatics that managed to make it through the cooking process. Things like the dried onion in the KFC style coating, they really sort of helped the chicken to shine. But when you added too many other spices and ingredients, you didn't really taste them at the end. I do think what is necessary in addition to flavor is having a little bit of liquid to mix with the coating. Because when we just had flour, it was beautiful and crispy, but you didn't have that like craggly fried chicken kind of situation. And just a single dredge for me because double, triple, way too much. In terms of cooking, I really felt the double fry gave me the best crunch. Now I do think like some sort of spicy sprinkle at the end would be good. I don't think I really need a sauce. Nice to have, but not necessary. So with all those things in mind, <laughs> I'm now gonna create what I think is my ultimate fried chicken. I'm gonna start out with a bone-in chicken thigh. For the brine slash marinade, I'm gonna pound some garlic, coriander, and peppercorn. Now the salt here is important because I'm getting my salt brine business going, and I'm also adding the flavor. And then this goes into the fridge for two hours because that's gonna give me the best, juiciest result. And then it's all about the coating. I need liquid in the form of buttermilk, and I need flour to make a craggly, crispy coating. I'm gonna dip my chicken in the buttermilk and then roll it in the flour, really pat that flour on to get a nice craggly coating. I'm gonna cook my chicken in hot oil twice. Once the chicken's out, I'm gonna finish it with a sprinkle made up of Korean chili powder, garlic powder, and salt. And that is my ultimate fried chicken. I think that looks really great. <laughs> I love I love the look of that. It looks crunchy, it looks spicy. It just looks like quite a delight, really. <laughs> I'm proud of myself already. All right, so it is now moment of truth time. What am I looking for here? I need crunch, I need juiciness, and I need flavor. Definitely juicy. Here we go, flavor. This is by far the one. I mean, <laughs> it's really good. Do you know what's so good about it though? Is you, first of all, you get spice, you get salty, you're getting crunchy, but then that like intrinsic sort of flavor inside the chicken, the garlic and that little hit of the pepper, it's beautiful. And in the end, what you're getting is just like a beautiful piece of fried chicken. It's pretty perfect. Not pretty perfect, it is perfect. And like there's so much flavor there, Sauce unnecessary, which is what I was aiming for. Oh, I could eat a whole bucket of that. So I think the only way I could have gotten to this was doing all the things that I had to do. Test all those theories. Oven baking <laughs> wasn't really necessary, but it all came down to a few key takeouts that resulted in this. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay. See, out of all the chicken, all the 14,000 pieces of chicken that we've seen over the last few days, this to me looks like it's the best. It's very handsome, isn't it? A very attractive chicken and the way that the, the craggly bits hold all the flakes and it's just got the perfect color and it, I it like looks pretty it. good. But you don't have to like it. I bet you I'm gonna like okay, it. Okay, well you, you try one and see what you think. Mmm. The crunch is out of this world. The spice on the outside that you get with the crunch it's, and it's so juicy and it just, it all comes together like a perfect little symphony. It's delicious. Do you need sauce? No, no sauce. Yeah, I agree, no sauce. It's oh, perfect. It's good, yeah. I do think it, yeah. you know, it's perfect. I feel like we came on a big journey, right? It took a long time. We tried so many things and I'm so happy that we got this, re like genuinely really happy we got this result. Yeah. Come on, Jax. Jax. Come in. Yeah. This bit do I have? <laughs> Any bit you like. Before I fall over. Yeah. <laughs> Fall over from this sinful chicken. That's amazing. That's really good. I don't know why I'm telling the camera that I should be telling you that. It's really good, man. Thanks, Dad. Mm. That's, That's a 10 out of 10. Nice. Possibly a 12. It's more than 10. Okay. Mm. <laughs> we won. Will we win anything? What well, do we win? So we win the best fried chicken. <laughs>